Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from Near Mint Condition. Today I'm going to do a little comprehensive reading order of one of my favorite DC characters, Nightwing. I'm going to split this up into two parts. I'm going to do this right after Nightfall, which is when his main series began, and right before he took over the mantle of Batman. So, please stay tuned. Taking a break from X titles to talk about one of my favorite DC characters. Nightwing. And before we get started in the trades, I also suggest reading the Batman Volume 3 Omnibus, or rather the Prodigal storyline, which is collected in trade paperbacks, and also in the Nightfall trades coming out later this year. But this also contains the Return of Alfred one-shot, or Alfred's Return, that is not collected for some reason in the trade paperbacks, but kind of sets up Volume 1 of Nightwing. So let's kick it off. Nightwing Volume 1, Bloodhaven by Dennis O'Neill and Greg Land, who had a different art style back then, and of course, Chuck Dixon and Scott McDaniel's art. Now, this takes place, like I mentioned, right after Nightfall, right after Prodigal. So, it was right after he took over the role of Batman, and then he decided to find himself. This is also the miniseries 1 through 4, and it collects the ongoing series Nightwing 1 through 8. Now, Ties That Bind was this miniseries here written by Dennis O'Neill. This is Greg Land, believe it or not before he got that light box kind of artwork. And this is also where Nightwing gets his new costume, his third costume. His first one was with that pop collar. Then the second one was the one he used during the Titan series in the 90s. That one that you see there. And then this one here, his costume that he practically uses the entire time in his own series right here. So he decides to become his own man and leave Batman in the world of Gotham, and this is, he's no longer kind of talking to the Titans, so he moves into the city called Bloodhaven, where he decides to become a police officer during the day and play Nightwing at night. And there's a whole new set of characters that are introduced here, but this is where everything kicks off. Now, previously there were some other trade paperbacks available, but this is the way to collect them. For some reason, the only thing that's missing from that first volume is the return of alfred i don't know why they decided not to collect it it was collected in a previous nightwing ties that bind trade paperback so not sure what happened uh this is volume two collecting issues nine through eight of the ongoing series as well as nightwing annual one uh this introduces us to blockbuster who is pretty much the kingpin of crime in bloodhaven doesn't like the fact that there is a new superhero that has come to his city. It also has the team up of Batman and Nightwing. Bruce is letting Dick Grayson become his own man. Yes, that's right, Dick Grayson, not Rick Grayson. Sorry, Tom King, not gonna happen. Has appearances by other villains like the Trigger Twins and introduces us to new villains like Tad, who's not really a villain. And then this guy right here, Torque, who Blockbuster broke his neck and Kind of turns his head 180. It's pretty cool. And he wakes up from that coma and he becomes this character known as Torque. His head is backwards. And this guy right here, Tad, who takes it upon himself to become this character known as Nightwing. N-I-T-E Wing. And a bunch of other side characters that live in Dick's building. Gorgeous artwork by Scott McDaniels. Who has a very anime-ish look to his art, which we'll look more here. See? Nightwing. And this is Volume 3, collecting the Nightwing Huntress miniseries, 1 through 4. That was written by Devin Grayson, I believe. And artwork by Greg Land again, whose artwork seems to be changing a little bit. And has the return of Helena as Huntress. And her and Dick have always had a relationship, business and personal. This collects, uh, yes, that miniseries, 1 through 4. Nightwing 19 through 25 and the half issue and as I was saying about Scott McDaniel's artwork it's very anime-ish but also has a lot of use of shadows so I, I really dug his art during the Daredevil Fall from Grace storyline that's where I was first introduced to his artwork I think it's gorgeous and I think it suits the character and of course guest appearance by Barbara Gordon and Tim Drake otherwise known as Robin and Oracle at the time so let's move on to volume four. There he is. Love that guy. He's a freaking nutcase, but I really like his character. And here we have Love and Bullets, volume four of Nightwing ongoing series. Now that design of Batman may look a little bit different because 
that's part of the Nightwing 1 million storyline, which was part of the DC 1 million by Grant Morrison. He gets a visit from the Batman in the, I think he's from the 853rd century. Um, I'm not going to talk about that much about spoilers. I will spoil some things, but not too terrible because uh, I've gotten comments on my videos that I may have spoiled too much as far as the X titles. Even though these stories are like 10 to 15 years old, some people have never read them. So I want to be fair to everybody. So I'll just talk a little bit about things. There's Torque. See? He said 180 degrees. Um, I will say this is not a spoiler, but this is probably the Nightwing run for me. My favorite run on Nightwing is Chuck Dixon's run. It is phenomenal. I love all the sub-characters he introduces, all the new villains he introduces. He really creates Bloodhaven as this city that is horrible and dirtier than Gotham, if that's even possible. He gets a visit from Superman in this issue. So this... Um, Trade collects Nightwing 26 through 34, Nightwing 1 million, and Nightwing Secret Files and Origins number one, which kind of has an untold story when Dick Grayson was with the Titans uh, back in his day. So let's move on to volume five. More gorgeous artwork by this, yeah, Scott McDaniel, of course. Then we have The Hunt for Oracle, volume five. This is the crossover with the Birds of Prey. So this pretty much is the story of how Blockbuster figures out who is behind all his schemes and his plans going south side. So he sends some of his assassins to go and kill Barbara Gordon, who of course right now, because she's crippled right after the Joker killing joke storyline, becomes the Oracle. So she's the one that gives uh, Dick all his all his intel on what Blockbuster is going to do. And since he's the kingpin of crime, he doesn't take too light to that. So this collects Nightwing 35 through 46, Birds of Prey 20 to 21, and that's it. And those Birds of Prey issues were drawn by Greg Land, who later becomes the ongoing artist of Nightwing with this new art style here. Volume 6, To Serve and Protect, collecting Nightwing 47 through 53, and the 80 page giant number one. And this is the one where Dick, even though he doesn't like Tad's way of doing things, he kind of takes him under his wing. Because Tad as Nightwing, N-I-T-E, is kind of a freaking psychopath and has killed people. But that's just the way he does his own thing. So I, I really like this issue. It's kind of like a partner in training kind of storyline. And as I mentioned before, Greg Land takes over ongoing art, so Scott McDaniel leaves the book, sadly. I really miss his artwork. But, you know, Chuck Dixon's still writing it, and this is still my favorite Nightwing story, so gotta keep on trucking. Here's some more artwork. This is uh, Dwyer, I believe, that does this issue here of the giant size. And moving on to volume seven. This particular volume is special to me because now we've gotten past the original first printing of the first volumes that came out. So we've gotten further than any other time collecting the Chuck Dixon run in trade paperback format. Yes, and unfortunately all these are only available in trade paperback and as you'll see one hardcover. Nothing oversized with the exception of course of the Prodigal story which takes place in that Nightfall volume 3. Or you can get the trade paperback of Prodigal or the trade paperbacks of the Nightfall stuff collecting Prodigal. I really think that sets up this story. So I think it's kind of needed. And this introduces us to this pretty cool character named Shrike. And he is kind of an assassin. No, he is not kind of. He is a damn assassin. But it's cool because so Blockbuster hires him to go and kill Nightwing and Oracle. But Shrike and Nightwing have a past because the two of them trained together when they were teenagers. So it's pretty cool that we are introduced to this new character, but he played a role in Dick's life in the past. Oh, that's got some gorgeous Rick Leonardi artwork here. I'm a huge fan of that guy. That guy's art style keeps on evolving and evolving and evolving. Rick Leonardi, there's Oracle right there. And this collects issues 54 through 60, Our Worlds at War Nightwing one-shot, and this beautiful Scott McDaniel artwork here, which is part of the one-shot Nightwing, the target. 
Now, sadly, we only have one more volume of Chuck Dixon's run, so let's look there. And this is it, the final volume, volume eight, which is called Lethal Force. And let's look through here. Now, this collects um, Nightwing 61 through 70, which is kind of serves as an aftermath of the Joker crossover, The Last Laugh, where Nightwing almost kills... No, you know what? He does kill the Joker, but then he's brought back to life, of course, because Batman can't let that happen. And that's all I will say about that. So this kind of acts as an aftermath of that, mostly dealing with Nightwing having to deal with the fact that he killed a villain, even though he was resuscitated. And let's see, this is the final Chuck Dixon story and artwork by Trevor McCarthy, who kind of has a Scott McDaniel and more cartoonish look. I never really liked his artwork, but it's got some villain issues by Phil Hester and Rick Leonardi. And sadly, this is the last we see of Chuck Dixon's run until he comes back. And also, sadly, this is the last volume that has been properly collected. Because now we're going to go look at the older volumes. Because DC has stopped making these, or at least these are in hiatus until further notice, so... You'll have to rely on buying a, a lot of out of print, some that are very, very cheap or some that are pretty freaking expensive, too expensive, I think. So the next time we see Nightwing or issues of Nightwing, they are collected in these War Games tray paper back. There are two of them. Now, before I dive into what's collected in these two, because I won't spend that much time on them, but I'll flip through the artwork. If you want to check out a kick-ass Nightwing story that doesn't have any Nightwing issues, go and check out Justice League Obsidian Age. There are two tray paperbacks collected of that. And it's an awesome, badass story how the Justice League gets transported through time and they have a backup Justice League. And who is the leader of the backup Justice League? Dick Grayson Nightwing himself. And it's a kick-ass story. Um, but anyway, War Games is this huge crossover about the Gotham Underground. It's also the story where Stephanie Brown becomes the new Robin and terrible things happen. So if you haven't read them, they're actually really good. Uh, War Games collects, this is Volume 1, Batgirl 53 and 55, Batman 631, Batman the 12th Cent Adventure, which kicks it off, Batman Legends of the Dark Knight 182, Batman Gotham Knights 56, Catwoman 34, Detective Comics 790 to 797, Nightwing 96, that's right, a huge, huge gap between 70 and 96, Robin 126 through 129, and Solo number 10. So then we have War Games Volume 2. That's that one over there, but I'll keep flipping through here. That collects Batgirl 56 through 57, Batman 632 to 634, and 642 to 644, which is the aftermath. Batman Legends of the Dark Knight 183 to 184, Batman Gotham Knights 57 through 58, Batman Secret Files and Origins 2005, Batman Secret Files and Origins Villains 2005, Catwoman 35 through 36, Detective Comics 798 through 800, and uh, 800, sorry, and then 809 and 810, Nightwing 97 through 98, and Robin 130 to 131. That's right, Nightwing 97 and 98. That's why I went through all that, just to talk about those two issues. So after Chuck Dixon left, uh, Devin Grayson took over the book with Greg Land on artwork. However, they decided to let Chuck Dixon come back and write a Nightwing Year One storyline which is pretty kick-ass. It's kind of a Nightwing, he's looking back at his transition from Robin to Nightwing, from his early days kicking butt with Batman to the Teen Titans, and then all the way until he took the mantle of Nightwing and how he got the idea. And if you don't know that story, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, and this collects issues 101 through 106. Again, this is the old style of trade paperback, so it's got that newspaper kind of print. Not great. Uh, and unfortunately, all these books are out of print. Well, some of them are. And some are expensive. But this one's worth tracking down for sure. So you had Devin Grayson take over the book. This is the next book right after year one. This is Mobbed Up. Collecting issues 107 through 111. It's crazy because you had Devin Grayson that had taken over the book. But they have never properly collected her stuff. Just these two trades right here. And that's it. And these are the old out of print trades that I was talking about. And this is a aftermath story after the huge events that happen in Nightwing, where I don't want to get too much about because there's a lot of controversial stuff that gets thrown in there. And like I said, uh, I don't want to spoil things, but something happens to one of his villains and he hooks up with the wrong person. So Batman's kind of stopped talking to him. So he goes through this whole crisis of conscience kind of thing. And 
he kind of becomes the leader of the mob. I mean, you can kind of tell by the cover. And the damn trade paperback is called Mobbed Up. And I kind of dig this. This is really cool. While I didn't like a lot of them and Grace and stuff, this this storyline is kind of kick-ass. And unfortunately out of print because it leads into the next storyline, which I think is one of the better non-Chuck Dixon Nightwing stories. And that's Renegade, where he takes on the mantle of this character known as Renegade and decides to go undercover working with the villains uh, society with Deathstroke, under Deathstroke. Uh, this collects issues 112 through 117, the final issues of Devin Grayson's run. So, come on, DC, get those Devin Grayson books out. And he also takes, um, what's her name, Rose, her, under his wing. So he adopts the villainous persona of Renegade in order to, like I said, infiltrate Lex Luthor's secret society of supervillains. Um, so he sides himself with Deathstroke in order to track the manufacturer that's making the venom serum from the the venom the 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 bane stuff the that made him strong and he also begins training and kind of giving her a role to play in the teen titans rose here ah what is her name uh, ravager that's her name ravager and you have a special appearance by superman now keep in mind this all takes place right before infinite crisis and there was rumors that dan didio wanted to kill off dick grayson in infinite crisis there is a huge cliffhanger here that i won't get into but i think it's really sweet where it was left off and this is the final issue written by Devin grayson so she didn't really get to finish her storyline because infinite crisis happened and then one year later takes place now infinite crisis takes place that miniseries that was supposed to kill off dick grayson and then at the last minute they decided not to kill dick grayson off but another character which, if you watch Old Reader, New Reader, you may get to find out who that is. Because we are going to be talking about Infinite Crisis here in the next month or so. Now, this is one year later. Which is what they decided to do with all the DC titles. To take place one year after Infinite Crisis. And then fill in the gaps what happened with that storyline. In between the ending of the last volume. Which was, of course, Renegade. And this with the title known as 52, but it didn't go as planned, so they left it up to another writer to decide what that gap did to Gr Dick Grayson's life. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, so this collects Nightwing 118 through 122, and it's probably my least favorite story. This is written by Bruce Jones, who is a horror writer, uh, who did a run on Hulk. And it's got artwork all over the place by Paco Diaz and Tara Nishi, I believe, draw some of this stuff. And it's not horrible, but it's just not consistent. And Jason Todd is now taking on the mantle of Nightwing for a little bit. I'm not going to tell you what happens. It's kind of confusing as hell. has a lot of sci-fi elements that I don't think belong in this book, or a Batman book for that matter. But that's just my opinion. Uh, out of print, uh, kind of expensive. To me, not worth tracking down, but that's my personal opinion. So I guess Bruce Jones didn't set out to do what DC wanted him to do when he left the book. And they were got excited and let Marf Wolfman come back on board. Marf Wolfman, the guy that created the character of Nightwing. He wrote Teen Titans for the longest time. New Teen Titans with George Perez. So he came on board and did this trade paperback. He did two stories. Uh, this is Nightwing Love and War, collecting issues 125 to 132. And this pretty much Nat Nightwing faces off against Raptor, who's a powerful new villain. Um, and he's wanted by the police for murder, of course. So, you know, it's trying to go back to those kind of Chuck Dixon days of heroics, but in Marf Wolfman in his own way. And he's kind of been out of touch with the character of Nightwing, and it shows in the way that this is written. And the story itself was okay. Now, the next one is the one I got excited about because it's Marf Wolfman writing the gap I was talking about. This one here, this is The Lost Year. That's right. This is was supposed to be what took place right after the big cliffhanger of Renegade. And there were aspects of this that I really enjoyed because he gets to write a lot of his old school characters again. Uh, this collects the Nightwing issues 133 to 137 and annual number 2. And it looks back on the story of how Dick and Barbara's relationship came to be. That's what it mainly focuses on. And also features other relationships that he's had. And the return of other villains that Marf Wolfman created back in his day in the 80s. So this was pretty cool. Not as great as the Chuck Dixon stuff, but okay nonetheless. 
And now we get into the crossover event, the resurrection of Raja Ghoul. Because spoilers, he was dead. I guess you can only be dead for so long when you own a Lazarus Pit. Okay, so this collects Batman 670 to 671, which is the Grant Morrison issues. Also collected in the Batman Grant Morrison Volume 1. But not all of this is collected. Now this is available in trade paperback as well. And collects Robin 168 through 169. Detective Comics 838 and 839, Nightwing 138 and 139. So immediately right after the Lost Year storyline, which was done by Marv Wolfman, and finishes it out with Batman Annual 26 and Robin Annual 7. It's a pretty cool crossover, and I'm glad I own it because this is not collected in entirety in the Batman Grant Morrison omnibus. Now moving on to the two final trades from DC. And there is a little bit of a gap, as you've noticed. Like, issues 123 and 124 were never collected for some reason. I don't know. Um, along with all those issues by Devin Grayson. This is DC letting one of its editors, it's Peter Tomasi, who is one of my favorite writers of all time now, because of his Batman and Robin, his run on Green Lantern, and his Super Sons, take over the Nightwing book, because they literally have no idea what to do with the character anymore. This is... Freefall, collecting Nightwing issues 140 to 146. Art by Rags Morales, who is kind of a hit and miss artist with me. He did the Identity Crisis miniseries. And Tomasi's goal was pretty obvious in this. He wanted to breathe new life into, Nightwing, into the Nightwing series and get back to some good old fashioned vigilante stories featuring everyone's favorite character, Nightwing. Uh, basically, <laughs> to try to do what the past three Nightwing writers have tried to do and did he succeed well let's find out in the final trade and this is just a little bit of more artwork from that run and that all leads into the final trade paperback and if i need to remind you again this all takes place right before he took over the mantle of the bat um this is the great leap collecting issues 147 to 153 of nightwing volume one and that finishes out 153 is the last issue there is no 154 um, this takes place after Batman Rest in Peace and eventually Final Crisis, which kind of go together if you've read any of that stuff. Not to spoil anything away, but Batman doesn't make it. It is called Batman Rest in Peace. So, I mean, I don't know if I've spoiled that or not, but sorry. Um, and this is actually a really good story. I really like this. I think it's it shows a really awesome character in Dick Grayson as he struggles with the loss and inner turmoil over the aftermath of Batman passing away. You know, it's the loss of his mentor and he's coming to terms with what inevitably is going to happen. He knows he's got to take up the mantle of Batman because no one is set to do it. Now, yes, there is a miniseries, The Mantle of the Bat, and other little miniseries that go on right up until the moment that Dick Grayson becomes Batman. But we all knew what was going to happen. There's only one man for the job, and that's Grayson. And I love the way that Peter Tomasi writes him. So yes, I, these are two of my favorite trades from the post-Dixon era. And unfortunately, one of these is really expensive, and the other one is okay. They're both out of print. Um, but yeah, that's that's it. This, this takes us up to Batman by Grant Morrison, Batman and Robin, where Dick Grayson becomes the new Batman. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the next video, but I mainly want to focus on just Nightwing and the, his issues collected in trade paperback. So I hope you come back and watch that video. And if I left anything out on accident, please let me know in the comments down below, or what you have added as must read. Like I mentioned the Obsidian Age, and, and honestly, I would also suggest reading the Joker's Last Laugh, but they did such a crappy job collecting this in just one trade paperback that I custom bound the storyline to collect all the important books in here. So, yes, The Last Laugh is kind of important read right before reading that one volume of Nightwing. If this is the first time you've seen this video and it was able to help you in any kind of way, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like button. And don't forget to check out our weekly show that comes out every Thursday where we talk about anime, comic books, manga, video games, toys. And don't forget to check out our weekly live shows that come out every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'd love for you to come and join us and talk about some of these old comic books that we've been reading lately. Again, this was Omar. Thank you very much for watching. And as my co-host Amanda says, stay minty, my friend.